Hello and welcome. There has been some questions online that I've seen recurringly lately about how to do an underwater scene. I'm going to just show you what we've done here to make it look like undery wateriness. And after we've gotten rid of that, we'll go over to Blender and we will see what's going on here. So we can see we've got a scene and to look around this, I'm just going to switch to Eevee just because I'm recording and on I'm on an AMD graphics card and we haven't got some love in a while for support for AMD cards so let's see what do we what do we do to make up this underwater scene so the first is a seabed that's nothing special these are just rounded cubes these are just some square cubes. This is just a Suzanne. And this is just a fish I sculpted in about five minutes. There's nothing special to any of that stuff. So how do we get the underwater look to work? So firstly, we have this PBR up here. And we do need a PBR for the lighting. But we're the caveat. What we want to do is we want to have a PBR and because water absorbs lots of light if you go just a couple of meters underwater it's going to start to get dark very quickly. So what we need to do is we need to come over to our scene and we can see we've got a PBR and we've got it set here to 0 0.025 in lighting intensity out of a usual zero to one calculation. So that gives us this very dim PBR. So the second thing we do is we add in a volume. Um, and the way I did that is I just added a cube as the domain for our volume metrics. And if you don't know how to do that, we just come over here and we go to That and we add in this volume scatter and we add it to our material output but again at a very low density we can see that um, with and without it's not making a lot of difference but what it is giving us is that sort of grey haze and it's adding some volume to the lighting so the next thing I went ahead and did to get this to look right is we need to come into our camera and we need to add in depth of field so because that's another property of water is it refracts light differently to air and that means above water camera lenses when we put them in water unless it's a specifically highly engineered lens it's it's not going to work right and even if even when it does you'll still get ripples and distortions because water's just much more dense than air so it bends the light that passes through it much more um so we need depth of field so we come over to here and you just select the object that you want to target in this case, I targeted the bubbles here because I want them in focus and the rest of the test scene out of focus. And yeah, so we just use the F stop there to control, to control how much depth of field we actually have. Lower is more, higher is less. I believe our usual setting would be about 2.8 but I set this to 0.09 I think yeah so if you just shift click you can do less or more and if you want to make it maybe more Marky or cartoony, do it quite a lot if you want it a bit sharper, 
like a professional underwater shot go a bit higher on this value um, so that's really apart from the bubbles here which are just a transmission with uh, index of refraction set to 1.05 um, we went a very small refraction because though they are air in water and we want uh, refraction to account for that so now we have one less last thing which is we need to do a couple of things in compositing to make this look right so firstly is water has distortion patterns here so we do that very simply with a displace node that we have here and we set that up to a texture and if we if we split this out and make it a an image viewer we can see the kind of caustics I created there in a third party application these aren't exactly caustics but they're close enough. You could use a caustics texture or you could use something with some fractal ripples or something like that. But we send that into a displace node and then we use those. And what that does is it gives us ripples. So we can see without our stack, we have no rippliness and that one we add in ripples and then just because this is an underwater shot it's a very common trope that we would add some lens distortion to an underwater trope as well which we then do so then without and with the lens distortion it's not a big difference, but it does, does just add to it. And then we have here a scalar to get rid of um, any artifacting from our distortion. And this is just an add node so that we can make sure that our scaling is the same on the X and the Y axis. And then, yeah, if you render that out in cycles, you will get something that looks uh, like it was rendered underwater. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful to you. Uh, goodbye.